Okay, hello everybody. Good day to you all, and God bless you, and welcome to today's study of the Word of God. We're going to pick it up today, Deuteronomy chapter 16. We're going to be covering uh, the three feasts, the time that uh, all of the children of God should gather uh, together with the congregation each year. It should be three times a year. And God expects you to observe his uh, feast days. <clears throat> so before we get started, let's go to our Father in prayer like we always do. Uh, Yahweh, Heavenly Father, pray that you open eyes, open ears this day, and let us receive the wisdom that you would have us receive from your word. So in Yeshua's precious name, let's get right into it. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, we're going to be covering the feasts. Verse 1, and it reads, Observe the month of Abib, and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, excuse me, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Now, this uh, is also called Nisan, and this is uh our equal to our April. <clears throat> now the Passover is going to fall on the 14th of Abib. And 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 and 8. Jesus Christ became our Passover. And you know in, in a lot of churches today. On the very high holy day of Christianity. They're out in the groves. Uh, rolling Easter eggs, uh, or some of the pagans are out in the groves having orgies, um, worshiping Ishtar, the pagan fertility goddess. Uh, does this sound s like something that you do at your church? Are you out in the groves rolling or uh, hunting for Easter eggs with your children, uh, the eggs being symbolic of uh, fertility? And the, the bunny rabbit being symbolic of uh, reproduction, quick like a bunny. Are you out doing this, uh, whether knowingly or ignorantly, on the very high, very high holy day of Christianity with your congregation? If you are, you need to understand that the Lord doesn't like it, not one bit. Ishtar is a mistranslation, and it should be translated Pascha which is Passover. All right, verse 2. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God, of the flock and the herd, in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Verse 3. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. Now, this bread of affliction, this is the bread which is sim uh, the symbol of their affliction that they suffered in Egypt. And they came out of Egypt in haste. You know, uh, this leaven, this is symbolic of yeast. And they came out of Egypt in haste. There was no time for the bread to rise. Uh, rise being in quotations uh, in this example that I'm giving here. By fermentation. And this made me think of Christ, who is our Passover, who is the bread of life, who rose from from the dead on the third day, defeating death and delivering whomsoever will believe upon him from sin and death. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, Matthew chapter 28, Mark chapter 16, Luke chapter 24, and John chapter 20 will document those things. Verse 4, And there, and there shall be no leavened bread seen within, with, excuse me, with thee, in all thy coasts seven days, neither shalt there, shalt there anything of the flesh, which thou sacrificed on the first day at even, 
remain all night until the morning. Verse 5. <clears throat> Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of the gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Where do you, where do you sacrifice it? Verse 6. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even, at the going down of the sun, at the, se at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. And of course, the going down of the sun uh, would begin the next day, the 15th, 17. And thou shalt roast and eat it, in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt turn in the morning, and go unto thy tents. 8. Six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work therein. This is no laborious work. Verse 9. Seven weeks shalt thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. And this is to the standing corn. <clears throat> and this would, this would begin on the, you know, numbering the, on the 15th day. Or after, excuse me, after uh, on the seventh day they had a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. And then they began numbering this seven weeks. Seven weeks, seven times seven being forty-nine days. Ten. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with the tribute of a free will offering of thine hand. Which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Now, this Feast of Weeks, this is going to be Pentecost. And this is celebrated on the 6th of Savan, uh, which is the third month, or our equivalent to our June. And this would be celebrated 50 days uh, from the Passover. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 9 through 12. And Exodus chapter 34, verse 22. Now, Pentecost is also when the Holy Spirit will speak through God's elect, or will speak through God's elect uh, during the end times when they're delivered up. It was also when the Holy Spirit spake through the disciples on Pentecost Day, back in Acts chapter 2. Uh, where the cloven tongue sat on the disciples and every man uh, heard in their own language what the Holy Spirit was speaking through the disciples. That's what the cloven tongue is. It goes out in all directions, meaning, and only the Holy Spirit can do this, meaning that the Holy Spirit spoke through the disciples and no matter where the person was from, uh, all across the world, even down to their own local tribe, they understood what was being said, and only the Holy Spirit can accomplish that. Verse 12, or excuse me, verse 11. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gates and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. Verse 12. And thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do these statutes. 13. <clears throat> thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days, after that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thine wine. Now this Feast of Tabernacles is also called the Feast of Ingathering. This is celebrated on the 15th day of the 7th month, which is Tisri. It's also known as Ethanim, 
and this is our September or October, and this is this is also the first month of the sacred year, and you have the civil year uh, and the sacred year being six months apart. Verse fourteen. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou, and thy son, and thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are within thy gates. 15. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase, and in all thine all the works of thine hands, therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. And when you keep his God's feast days and uh, a solemn assemblies and gather when he says gather and keep his commandments as best you can, you're going to be able to rejoice because you're going to be blessed. Sixteen. Three times in a year shall all the males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty or empty-handed. Shall bring their sacrifices and their, and their offerings. 17. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. 18. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment, according to the word of God. 19. Thou shalt not rest judgment, Thou shalt not respect persons, nor take a gift, nor take a bribe. You shouldn't show partiality, and you should not take a bribe. And rest judgment. You shall not tamper with judgment, or with justice. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise. A bribe is going to pervert uh, righteous judgment. And pervert the words of the righteous. 20. That which is altogether just shalt thou follow, that thou mayest live, excuse me, and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. 21. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Now, uh, well, we'll go ahead and go 22. Neither shalt thou set thee up any image which the Lord thy God hateth. Now, this word image in the Hebrew, this is matzeba. And it's something stationed, a column or a memorial stone, a pillar or an idol. And, you know, the heathen, they like to set these things up and worship them. Make something carved out of stone or Something carved out of wood that's not even alive. God, God can't stand it. He, he's jealous. He wants to be the one that's worshipped. Why? Because he's the only one worthy of being worshipped. And deserving of being worshipped and loved. Why? Because he's good. And he created your very soul. And everything that you see around you. God created it. And he's the only righteous uh, one worthy of any type of worship and he's awesome he's awesome to serve and uh, it's a pleasure to serve him and to teach his word okay that's going to conclude chapter 16 in today's study of the word of god uh, i love you all because y'all love studying god's word and more importantly god loves you for it uh you know you don't want to worry about pleasing man it's not you know man can't do much for you uh, you want to worry about pleasing your Heavenly Father. And when you read His letter and study His letter and try to keep His commandments and try your best, give it 100%, He marks that as, as perfect and and He's going to bless you. You know, we all fall short of the glory of God and we're in these flesh bodies and the only one perfect was His Son, Jesus Christ. And so when you do fall short, 
and you have that uh, repentance, which meaning you have that true change of heart, meaning you don't want to do those things anymore that you messed up at, you just repent. And because of the blood of Jesus Christ, those sins are wiped away. And my friend, you have a fresh slate and you get to continue on with serving the living God and being blessed. That, that's the beauty of Christianity is that repentance. And uh, it, it makes it makes you, allows you to be able to continually serve God even though you fall short and stay in His good graces and keep His blessings uh, as long as you, you know, you have a true change of heart whenever you do fall short. You can't con him. I mean, he even knows what you're thinking. So if you think you can con God, then <laughs> my friend, that, that's just funny. Um, but, you know, God's will is for everyone to come to repentance. They won't, but that's what his will is. Uh, if you don't know him, I pray that you decide to uh, believe upon him and come to repentance and uh, join us uh, with that eternal life and in this wonderful life of Christianity. All right. Love you all. Don't miss the next lecture. And thank you for watching.